Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode on the channel. Dude, this thing barely turned on this morning. I haven't driven it in like two weeks since I got that truck and uh, it just like barely cranked up, but we got it here. It's charged up again, so we're good to go. All right, so today we're going to be showing you guys how to properly get the top end numbers out of the skis. Kind of how we do here, right? Right, Angels? We gotta show these guys how to ride their skis. Why, did somebody mess up? No, because they run like 78 mile an hour, 77 mile an hour, and they're like, I thought it would go 80. Well, I mean, if they take off the passenger, the back seat, the tank, and the, the cooler, you know, they'll probably do 80. Mm. Mm. Or maybe if they're not sitting like straight up, like this. Like a two by four. Like an air brake. <laughs> so yeah. A parachute. A parachute, yeah, yeah. All right, so we're gonna show you guys how to ride your skis so you can get the most uh top end numbers out of them and it's uh the day after the fourth after the weekend so i'm in here just packaging a bunch of stuff up so yeah get in this video show you guys how to ride your skis All right, guys, so I guess I should talk about these catch cams uh, before I package them, package them all up because we're out again. But we usually get a shipment every week, so we kind of keep everything in stock for you guys so you can order, things like that. So a couple things I want to touch on on the cams. We had some issues in the beginning where this bracket was too long. Back then, those were made by a different person. Uh, since then, we've taken the basically the can over and we started making them ourselves. So normally this bracket is about this much longer. It was hitting all the newer skis up in the front of the air box. So we took that out, redid our bracket, obviously made it shorter. Uh, another thing that was happening with these is once we got our bracket on there, our bracket was a little thinner than this in the beginning and it kept breaking and cracking off. So I'm pretty sure since then I've replaced all those cans for everybody when they've failed. Um, but now we use a thicker bracket which has welds on the front and on the back so we've had pretty much eliminated any of the issues with the brackets breaking on here uh, another thing that we noticed with the cans that we were having some issues with were the filter element here it would just fall off of the can uh, so we've remedied this by obviously putting a different filter on there and as you can see this thing isn't going anywhere so that's good now the last thing that we did for the cans is uh, this little extra piece right here. Uh, normally we put the drain valve directly onto the washer down here and it was leaking from the drain valve. So we actually added this little piece here now with the valve on here. So the leaks from the bottom should now go away. So a couple tips to keep this thing from overflowing. Uh, really it's just one tip. You have to make sure your oil level is correct. If the oil level is not correct, this thing is going to fill up and it's going to come right out of the filter and spew oil all over your brand new jet ski. So make sure on the oil level you want to have uh, the dipstick, there's two bend marks. Right in the middle of the two bends is where you want your oil level. Uh, so I'll show you guys live out there on an actual dipstick so you can see what I'm talking about. But for the most part, this can is pretty much 100% right now i don't see any design changes coming to this anytime soon so this is basically the end result to the jp racing catch can or the catchinator 5000 as you guys would like to call it and uh yeah we might do a couple little changes here and there as far as uh this bar fitting goes here or something else maybe another logo on it we already do have our logo right here on the bracket uh, but maybe we'll put it on the side or something who knows but so far this thing has been proven to be pretty solid now and uh Yo, I mean, look at it. It's like a piece of art, man. The welds are beautiful. Everything is, is on point. This is all made piece by piece here. So uh, know that when you are buying these cans, you're gonna get a quality product. You're not getting something that's gonna, you know, degrade or look like crap after a while. You know, this is all stainless. This is, you know, hard as a rock. This, is, this thing is not gonna break. So that's that. Those are the updates on the cans. Show you a couple things out there in the shop. Uh, get you guys up to speed, try to get you more speed out of your skis uh, with the tips that I'm going to show you on what to do. Alright, what do we got here? Rocker Arm Life. 
Look at this thing. This thing is broken beyond broken. That is supposed to go on there. So we're going to have to pull this uh, rocker arm setup off and see what we got going. What do you think, Angel? Why did this happen? Too much rev limiter. Too much rev limiter. Too much sending it. Too much sending it. Yeah, he has to get a little less send going on here. So yeah, this ski was only going about 60 miles an hour or so. Uh, this ski has gone 86 miles an hour, so it's definitely down on speed. And that could be one of the main issues why it's down on speed. So, but we're gonna take out the supercharger as well, check slip on that, and then take it to the water, see what kind of uh, numbers this thing will produce with a rock arm replaced on there. So, uh, I'm grinding on here. Ooh, them packages though, that tape though. Fancy. Super fancy tape? Hell yeah. All right, let's show these people. You ready? What? Show them how to ride jet skis. Are you gonna show them? Yeah, you're gonna be the model. What? Nah. Come on. I'll hold the camera. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, 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 nah. nah, 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 nah. It's your idea. Nah, I have to explain it to them. Nah, I'll, you explain it as you're doing it. It's easy. Nah, but you look not way because, better when you're all stretched out and stuff. Can, like, say it as you're doing it. Here, I'll hold the camera. Nah, let go. I'll, I, no, got I, got right. I got you. I got you. I got you. Bro, I've been honing my uh, video taking skills. So uh, let me practice here, bro. I'm gonna no. show you what I can do with a camera. All right. Yeah. All right. Should we move this over there? Because there's nah, more room to walk around, isn't there? Nah, you'll be okay. All right. All right. <laughs> First tip. You have to make sure that your oil level is not overfilled. If your oil level is overfilled, then you should talk to your gonna, mechanic. Yeah, talk to your mechanic or slash the dealer. If the oil level is overfilled, you're going to lose RPM and you're going to blow oil if you don't have a cash can all into your inner cooler, which is obviously going to slow you down. So this is where we usually recommend to run the oil level. Here's one bend, two bends, usually right in the middle or a little bit above the middle like I run it on my ski. So that's the first thing you need to check. Second thing you need to check is going to be spark plugs. If you haven't changed the spark plugs in a while, if it's been uh, I don't care if it's been 15 hours, 20 hours, change the spark plugs. Usually these things eat spark plugs, you'll start losing performance once those things start to get worn out. If your wearing is bad and your impeller's damaged, then you're not going to go anywhere. So, for instance, this customer here said his ski was not going anywhere. End up his jet pump was bad. He has a stainless steel wearing, so it's not bad, but the jet pump being bad, screwed up the prop which in turn gave it all this space right here and that space doesn't allow the water to be processed so you're losing speed from that so wear ring and prop got to be checked and make sure that stuff is on point um, and then we could show them how to ride the jet ski for top end numbers why are you laughing bro this is the part I've been looking forward to. Yeah, I bet this is the part you've been looking forward to. Are you gonna start it up and like accelerate it and everything? Yeah, or? the whole thing. <laughs> oh my Whoa. god, this poor stand. Alright, so if you're riding the ski and you're sitting straight up like this. Think about the air that's coming over and you're just, you're a big air brake. So if you're trying to get top end numbers doing this, it's not gonna happen. You're gonna lose at least, what would you say, two mile an hour? A mile or two probably sitting like this? Yeah. So you have to stretch it back. So this is Angel's favorite part because he likes to see my butt in the air. Nah, so that's basically, why I'm standing on this side. You want the ski to be, you want the ski to lift the nose up as much as it can out of the water because if you have the nose down you're just dragging it through the water at this point so you got to trim all the way up which will allow you to trim the nose up but then you need to sit as far back on the ski as you can and obviously you want to try to get as far like duck down under this handlebar as you can because like i said if you're sitting straight up it's just an air brake so sure, bro, normally sure. We'll put, you know, a leg back or whatever, and then you just drop all the way down. This way, the air goes over you instead of you just throw, throw it back, bro. Okay, throw it back. Throw. Throw it back. <laughs> throw it back. 
So basically, this is how we do our top end hits. You know, we're tucked down, you know, let the air go over us. So that's basically what you need to know to get your top end numbers. Like I said, if you have the trim down, you're just dragging the nose through the water. If, you're dra if you have the trim down and you're sitting like this, you're not gonna go anywhere at all. You're gonna lose like 10 miles an hour just with that. Um, another thing is fuel level. If your fuel level, if you're full on gas, that means you have all the weight in the nose. So that means that the nose is not gonna be able to come out of the water. So that's why we always test with three bars, four bars, or whatever the case may be. Um, yeah, that's about it. What else you got for me? Got a little Elsa stack going there since uh, it's Hurricane Elsa outside right now. Uh, so I'm just packaging up some stuff. I got one that's headed to Spain, which is pretty cool. Never shipped anything to Spain yet. And then uh, I got one here that's on freaking hold because Solus doesn't get their act together, man. We need some freaking 1318s. I have everything in stock other than the Solus 1318. And I can't, you know, I can't sell my big kits because I don't have the prop for them. So I'm probably gonna end up having to change the prop that we use uh, for now till we get the 13, 13, 18s back. So let's check out what these guys are doing out here. I know we have a 21 GP1800 in the house that we're doing some camps to. Uh, we're also doing the fuel pump setup in here. So we're going big fuel pump, uh, regulator. We're also doing the uh, Riva shaft. And I want to say the cams, right? We're doing VXR cams on this? Yeah, I think so. Think so? They're oh, nice. Exhaust and intake so we had these, had Angel weld these up real quick just to keep these caps in. A little tip for you Yamaha guys. I gave a tip to the Yamaha guy, Pauls. And we're Sea-Doo guys. guys, exactly. The irony, right? Science. I think I put this on there. I hope you put it on there. All right. So, let's see what the weather looks like outside since it's been nothing but a hurricane out here. It's been insane all. Yep, looks the same. All right, we did this uh, 300 over here. Start this up. Let you guys hear how rowdy it is. This one ate up a flywheel and a supercharger gear, and I'll show you guys that after. Now that you got the gist of how you're supposed to ride these things and maintain these things, sort of, uh, I wanted to talk about this little area of the shop right here. Uh, if you guys remember when we were, oh, actually, I don't think you guys were, yeah, I don't think I had my YouTube when I started this. So before I started the YouTube channel, we, I actually moved into the shop. You guys saw me tear down that wall. We expanded over two more bays. Uh, I had this uh, mural done uh, by our buddy Ricky G. And if you could see, the whole wall is pretty much done, except for right around the t-shirt cage. So I left this uh, plane like this for a reason because we thought about grabbing the two other sh uh, bays that are next to us. So as you guys can see right here, there's two more bays. But in there, there was a friend of ours that did some window tinting work. I uh, did uh, some motorcycle thing there at one point, uh, but he decided that he's gonna be leaving there and now I have the opportunity to take over those bays. So I'm glad that I didn't paint anything or do anything over here except for hang these racks because if I could work out a deal with the landlord here, I'm gonna open this thing up and we're gonna have two more bays. So basically the same size as this right here on the other side um, where I'll end up probably turning the shipping area. As you guys know, the shipping area is in the back back there and it's kind of tight. So we might just move that all the way over to this side, uh, do something else with that area back there. And then there's a high demand for, for use skis. Uh, as you guys know, you can't really go to a dealership and get a used ski. You have to always buy new. And the people that do sell their skis used, it's hard to like gauge how good these skis have been taken care of if you're going to go pick it up from somebody. So 
what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna offer skis for sale, used skis that we have gone over, you know, fixed whatever little bugs that they needed to be fixed or just prep them for the next user. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do half of a shipping area and then the other half I'll have a, a set of skis in there that are ready to go for just a regular guy that could come in and buy just a stock ski. Maybe I'll have a modified ski in there. Uh, you know, just something that's affordable and something that people can trust and pick up from us. So that's probably what I'm gonna do with that area over there if we get into it. Now, I have been tossing the idea around on getting out of this place completely just because we can't keep up with the people coming in and the amount of space that we have. As you can see, we're, you know, we pretty much are stacked to the back. So this will give me an opportunity to have a little bit more space to put some skis over there if I have to on top of the skis that we have for sale and the shipping area. Yo, what a crazy week it has been this week, guys. Um, I don't even know how I was even able to put any type of video together this week for you guys. Because it was literally, you know, picking up the camera, putting the camera down, picking up the camera, putting the camera down. Uh, we are, like always, non-stop in here, slam jam to the max. And again, it's because of you guys uh, that were able to stay this busy, man. So I, I appreciate all the work. Um, next week, though, next week should be a little bit more of an organized video. Uh, we're going to be working on the two turbo builds that we have in the shop. So we have a GTX 300 and we have the Yamaha GP 1800 that are both going to be going turbo. So we're going to start the next part on that blue GP. Uh, I'll show you guys real quick. The up pipe came in today. Shout out to my boy BK Built. Got this beautiful piece in today. And we have uh, the 38 mil tile wastegate that we're going to use. And my customer is not uh, really primarily focused on a big top end number. He just wants to get rid of the supercharger because of the whole clutch crap issue that they have. And he wants to just be able to spool real quick and get to 100. So with this smaller 5858, it's actually the same turbo that I run on the Sea-Doo, the 5858. They spool real, real, real quick. So this will be a great setup for him. You know, it's, he, like I said, he's not interested in going a thousand miles an hour. He just wants to go a hundred miles an hour and not have to deal with supercharger clutches. So this is uh, basically his turbo setup here. We have his head right here. So yeah, I'm gonna be putting that thing back together, slapping the turbo on it, and hopefully you guys hear some turbo noises soon. So. Uh, like, I, like I said before, I appreciate everybody's support. Thank you guys so much for supporting this whole entire business that we're running here. We're about to expand. Uh, man, and you know, if it wasn't for you guys and you know, for my guys as well, putting in all the freaking hard work every week here, uh, and myself, you know, being the shipping master in the shipping department now, uh, I know you guys watching are ordering stuff and everything is in stock and always getting to your house within a few days. So I appreciate it. Uh, you guys know what to do. Do the spiel. Do the whole spiel. Like, comment, hit the little bell thing, and uh, catch you guys next week, man.